Hello and welcome to another edition of Rappin' with Reverend Laura, the COVID edition. Um, Marilyn and I, our parish nurse, Marilyn Cummins, are sitting six feet apart. We have two yardsticks to show you that. And we have our masks on, but we're gonna take our masks down just for the purpose of recording this, and we'll explain why. Marilyn and I are still wearing our masks most of the time and um, sitting six feet apart, even though we have both received the two doses of the vaccine. Um, Marilyn and I are a part of the BCC task force that is discerning our best practices and how we come back to worship. And so um, we've had a lot of questions coming in about that, about the vaccines, how they work, are they safe? So Marilyn and I are going to have a little conversation about um, the vaccines because we've both done it and we've each done a different vaccine so we can talk about that too and tell you a little bit about the task force plans for coming back to worship um marilyn let's start there okay what are the rubrics that we're looking for the guidelines that we're looking for before we can come back to worship in person yeah or at any point yeah. well we've the task force has meet um, met diligently every month and we're looking at several criteria and basically following the guidelines of the um, Council of Churches, CDC guidelines, and our own common sense and how our particular church um, worships and how we um, do things here. So we're, they're specifically looking for uh, an infection rate uh, in Wisconsin of less than 5% and herd immunity or people getting the vaccine 70 to 85%. Those are the specific things. Um, I guess the other factors are, um, we talked about tracking who would get the vaccine. We're not gonna do that. There's no vaccine shaming, but um, that's basically it. Those are the two main things. Any When we meet um, the group, if they have questions or things that they've heard, or we look at the um, updated guidelines, which we review with the Council of Churches, we, we go from there. Yeah. Thank you. The main thing is to, you know, in spite of we all miss one another, want to get back together, our job is to make sure that everyone is, we come back safely. Mm -hmm. um, and if, you know, the, when all said and done and we come out with the recommendations, we decide to open up, it's still up to you what you feel comfortable doing. Right, right. And um, uh, there's the other piece of that that I would just add is that... Um, and, and that um, infection rate of less than 5% should be consistent for three weeks. Oh, correct. Um, and, and part of that is that um, we want to make sure that we aren't just in a low period before a spike, um, which sometimes happens. Um, the other piece of this um, that I, we want to convey on behalf of task force is that there's lots of layers to this. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be back in person meeting uh, for worship and for other gatherings more than Marilyn and I. <laughs> it will mm -hmm. make our jobs a thousand times easier. Plus, we miss everybody as much as you all miss church. Um, but one of the things that the task force decided in, in following the guidelines of the CDC and the Wisconsin Council of Churches is um, that it's not just is what's right for our church, it's what's right for our community. And so um, we want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. And even though it would feel really great to, uh, especially now that we're beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel, to come back and just get back in person, we want to be really, really careful about that. Yeah. Um, because we want to do the right thing. Yeah. And we don't want to open up and then we have some awful outbreak yeah. and we have to close again. That would, everybody's confidence in our, you know, we'd all be flattened by that that would yeah we don't want to do that so yeah, yeah. so um we've both been vaccinated we've both had the vac second vaccine we're out enough sort mm -hmm. of to be safe mm -hmm. so um why are we still staying six feet apart and masking do you want to say a little bit about that sure um 
I think the biggest thing is, we can talk about this in a bit, about the efficacy of the vaccine and how you will, are you uh, immune from transmitting it, all of that. The, they're doing this, a lot of this in real time, because this is a new thing, right? Um, the vaccines are all great. Um, whatever one you can get your hands on, get it. Uh, we know the new one coming out, Johnson & Johnson, is just one um, injection. The others, Moderna and Fi Pfizer, are two. But as they're figuring this out in real time, they don't know what the immunity is going to be, that time period from when you get your second dose to how long that your immunity is going to last, how long you're protected. So we want to make sure that we're still following all those guidelines. Um, common sense, you know, again, you all know the, you've heard it, wearing your mask, uh, washing your hands, staying a safe distance from folks, because that's going to be the biggest thing. There, there's questions on if you get the vaccine um, and you go, your family's vaccinated, and you go to grandma and grandpa's and they've not had the vaccine or they've not had any symptoms, they don't know if you're immune from transmitting it to those loved ones. And um, until they do more studies, this is real time, day, day to day, that they're finding these things out. And um, one of the questions has come up um, with several things I've witnessed. The question is about, are you gonna need a booster shot? Is this gonna be something like a flu vaccine that you're gonna have to get every year? They don't know that yet either. They'll find that out because they learn about vaccines and their efficacy based on previous okay. vaccines and outbreaks of diseases. Um, they think at the worst, um, for the Johnson & Johnson, because you get one, you might just need one booster. Mm -hmm. And then same for the Moderna and the Pfizer, you would get another one. So you would have three of those um, and then one of the um, J&J. &J. Mm. But we still have to be diligent about it because um, th there's just a lot of unanswered questions yeah. to it. And um, they did, they have said though that if even with the first dose of the vaccine or the single dose with the Johnson & Johnson that you have a s decrease of 76% of transmitting it. Mm. So that, I just read that in the CDC guideline and that's what they're kind of seeing. And Wisconsin, the numbers are down quite a, quite yeah. a bit. I'm yeah. not to that 5% yet, but um, so as people are getting vaccinated, um, we can see, or being careful right. or whatever, I think there, you know, there's going to be the test of people that may have had COVID were asymptomatic, mm -hmm. um, or symptomatic and they, um, never got the vaccine and they never had an outbreak, but they had some symptoms. They weren't tested because they, mm -hmm. it was, let's say Thanksgiving last year and it's November 13th and I'm having these symptoms and I want to get together with my family at Thanksgiving and they don't want to be so right. ostracized. So they get together. Maybe they spread it. We don't know that. Right. So um, they're not going to be able to, to tell that. So and part of the her herd immunity is they're not going to really know um, they would be part of it. They just were exposed, didn't have symptoms. Right. And so that it still kind of counts. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be determined about transmitting. So I think for a while we're going to, you know, use your, wear masks. Um, so about the vaccine, um, uh, this is not on our question sheet, so I'm throwing you a curveball. Good. But um, <laughs> if, uh, if somebody had uh, COVID, tested, had symptoms, got through it, recovered, but that was six months ago, mm -hmm. should they get the vaccine? Or, yes. Okay. Yes. That is what I talked to my physician mm -hmm. about that. And, you know, as you know, I went through cancer treatment and I'm in remission. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and um, he still recommend that I, you know, of course, mm -hmm. get it. And if down the line, you know, if I had gotten some, I would still recommend. I mean, it would right. still be recommended because they just don't have the answers to those questions. Mm. And gosh forbid, you don't, it, if you see somebody with COVID in the care of what I've heard from, you know, my family, healthcare workers caring for these folks, it's, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. And getting any of the vaccine, any three of them, like I said, take whatever you can get. Um, it 100% I mean, it's not 100% that you'll right. have, but it's 100% that you won't be seriously ill, hospitalized, and die. So that will like, cover you that so way. So it's kind of like the flu shot. 
you may right. still get the flu, but you won't be as sick. Perfect example. Okay. Yeah, even with that, they're saying they don't know. Could you get COVID? Maybe, mm -hmm. but you're going to recover from it. And we want to keep in mind that 99.6% of folks that get COVID do recover from yeah. it. So we're not trying to scare anybody, but gosh, you don't want to be the other 0.4% right. right. or one of your loved ones because it's, um, and we don't know the danger, the long lasting effects from this. Right. We right. know there's some lung issues, clotting issues. Um, there's something called a cytokinin response. And at the cellular level, folks are having, um, you know, it if the, the back of your brain, your occipital area is where your olfactory your smell. Mm -hmm. So if you've heard of folks have side effects of, uh, they lose their t taste of smell, uh, um, a sense of smell and their taste from it. And there's cell, the coronavirus destroys some of those cells yeah. and sometimes it doesn't come back. Yeah. Um, uh, they're seeing some things with liver, you know, the liver. Mm -hmm. So it's all kinds of nasty things with it. So not to scare anybody, but just, but we you know, need to take it seriously. We need yeah. to take it seriously. Yeah. This is nothing to, to sniff at for no. sure. <laughs> no pun intended. Right. Don't yeah, that was a bad yeah. pun. <laughs> um, so who should get the vaccine? And, and could you explain a little bit also about how it works? Because I know some people sure. get anxious about getting it. Oh, sure. Yeah, nobody likes to get a needle, right? right. But if you ever have blood drawn or an IV started, it's nothing like that. No. It's, most of us have gotten a little needle. So... Um, yeah, everybody should get the vaccine as soon as it becomes available to you. Um, I just had a conversation with a family member. They're trying to get it in Pennsylvania to their elderly mother, and they can't get it. It's like it's an act. They don't even have it in a lot of areas of Pennsylvania, speaking. And um, this person got notification because she's sort of an essential worker and younger than her mother, and she's concerned, I don't want to jump the line. Right. Um, and you hate to think of it that way. Right. And we do naturally because we want to look out for those that are more susceptible. But go ahead and get it. Yeah, right. um, absolutely. Um, sign up any way you can. Um, Laura, through her husband Scott, has put out an email. Check your email um, and availability to get it. And uh, the mosque is doing it. So if you have any questions or you're struggling, you can't get it, call the office um, and we'll make sure. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll help you. Um, navigate that. Mm. How the vaccine works is kind of um, another question people had. Are they altering my DNA? Um, you right, because it's called an RNA, RNA messenger rather than a live virus vaccine. So right. people go, oh, I heard <laughs> DNA. Yeah. What are they going to do? It's not like they're microchipping you. <laughs> Nothing right. like that's going to happen. <laughs> so I guess the easiest way to explain it is so um, when you get the vaccine and it goes into a muscle, obviously in your arm, um, so it's a little deep. Um, what happens is the lipid molecules or the lipid droplets, fat, you know what lipids are, get, they pick up the um, messenger RNA. That messenger RNA and those lipids then, that gets into your cell muscle, the muscle of your cell, and it creates what's called a protein spike, and it pushes that out and says, hey, you know, we need to form antibodies. It's not a live virus, you're not, none of that. So the good thing is, um, you know, you're gonna feel some soreness in your arm. People ask about side effects. Well, I, what if I don't have any side effects? Does that mean I'm covered? Did I get right. it? Absolutely, you are covered. Um, the statistics are that 55% do not have any side effects from the first or second dose. And even if you get, um, this tells you, if you have a sore arm, which I've, I haven't heard of anybody who doesn't have a little bit right, of a sore right. arm, what that means is actually that, um, that uh, spike, that protein spike is um, causing that, your, your sort of innate um, immune system and your, is, is your natural immunity is sort of going a little crazy mm -hmm. because here you have this adaptive immune system coming in and fighting that and it's saying, hey, you know, we got something going on, we need to pay attention. So your natural body, you know, when you hurt yourself or cut yourself, you get an inflammation. Mm -hmm. So that inflammation is saying, you know, yeah. your, your body's responding to it. Mm. Um, and there's been some people have had a little bit of headaches, just tired, um, mm -hmm. not a lot of energy. And just, um, I wouldn't plan on if when you get the vaccine, you know, kind of lay low and just yeah. cave into it a little bit and rest. Um, everybody's different. 
some people don't get very much. I don't think, Laura, you didn't really I have didn't anything. Have any, and I wanted to testify because I know some people are nervous about getting it because they're afraid of sure. having negative side effects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or that the side effects are going to somehow be worse than mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am somebody who gets every possible side effect of uh -huh. everything I take. Yeah, I can't even read the things. Part of it's hypochondria. <laughs> but um, I was so anxious about getting both doses, but particularly the second, because my first dose they'd said, hey, just be aware you might... Um, Mm -hmm. you might want to um, be aware that you might feel worse after the second dose. So mm -hmm. I was so afraid and I planned to have the, I got it on a Friday morning. I came, I recorded the service and I was like, I'm, or no, I got it on a Thursday. We recorded early so I could have Friday and Saturday with nothing as mm -hmm. I'm going to be in bed suffering. Mm -hmm. You, know? <laughs> you, you um, kind of talk yourself. I had yourself. nothing. And mm -hmm. Nothing at all. I mean, other than a sore arm both mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. um, did I have a little vague, like, eh, maybe I don't feel quite right or a little bit of a headache? Yeah, but nothing that was debilitating mm -hmm. or anything. And if I'm a big chicken and I can do it, everybody but can, can do, do it. it. Yep. And even uh, people I've known that have had a little more significant side effects have said to me, then I just thought, okay, I'm not on a respirator, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, my lungs aren't being damaged. I'm not, you know what, if I have a sore arm and I feel a little punky for 12, 24 hours, mm -hmm. it's okay. Right. The only tip that I got that I did that really I think helped was I hydrated like crazy oh, good point. before and after the shot mm -hmm. um, because you are having an immune response and mm -hmm. you just want to keep those cells healthy and mm -hmm. moving. And um, so I hydrated so much that I probably gave myself like over <laughs> your but, um, yeah so the only side effect I had was having to go to the bathroom a lot but sure. I yeah so I want to encourage well, people it's not it, no, it's not scary like no. that yeah and another um, thing that's come up with with the vaccine the side effect you can get some fever some chills mm -hmm. um, if they last more than 24 hours to 48 hours after you've received either shot just contact your doctor and yeah. see what you should do but Certainly don't be alarmed because this has been all over the board um, with right. people. A lot of people have had fever, headaches, just feeling kind of punky, I guess, yeah. is the best word. But something also to keep in mind, so there's some um, stuff floating around out there. Well, I'm going to take some Tylenol, mm. pre-medicate myself. I would discourage you from doing that for two reasons. Number one, when you get the first shot and the second, you have to wait 15 minutes because mm -hmm. they want to see um, if you have a, an allergic reaction to it. So if you take Tylenol, that would, um, you know, they wouldn't be able to, mask it, it would mask yeah. it, right. And, um, and this is your immune system working. So you're trying to <laughs> fight something, you're, it's something in your body's trying to develop and net your shutting it down. Right. Um, however, afterward, like 24, if you are, you know, feeling terrible, there's no reason you can just can't take some plain Tylenol. Right. But again, if it lasts more than two days and it just seems a little off, um, perhaps just, you know, I would call my, my doctor, but I haven't heard anybody no. have that yet. No, Maybe two all. days where you're down and out, but not right. really debilitating, right. I would say. So please don't premedicate with <laughs> right. something before you go. Right. So. I uh, had heard about that and thought about doing it, and I thought, I'll wait, oh, um, yeah. because I didn't want to mask anything, and, um, and then I sort of thought, okay, six hours after I get the vaccine, if I need to take something, I can take something, and I didn't even need to do that, mm -hmm. so um, I think a lot of it Oops. is anticipation by people that it's, they're anxious about it going to sure. be bad, or, sure. and if I can stop it from being bad, it was not bad at all, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, uh, and we really want to, I mean, we're not going to shame anybody that isn't going to get the vaccine into getting the vaccine, but mm -hmm. we want to dispel any myths and, and get, you know, help people feel more confident in that. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to just mention that, um, I had, a, and we've talked about this, just a great sense of relief mm -hmm. after I got mm -hmm. my second mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. Um, I was lucky that, uh, pro health was including clergy in their, Mm -hmm. um, sort of second tier. And so mm -hmm. I was able to get it. And, um, uh, I thought, well, I'll do it because it's available to me. And I did feel that kind of skip in the line guilt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think we've all had this sort of, uh, pall of fear over us sure. about, um, 
how like, oh, I have sniffles or I have a sore throat or I have a little bit of a mm -hmm. cough or I feel a little achy. I should get a COVID test. Mm -hmm. I probably have COVID. You know, that, that's <laughs> yeah. how I thought. And yeah. I've had a lot of COVID tests. I've never had a <laughs> you positive. You have had a few. I've had a few. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just that sense. It doesn't change anything about my behavior. But emotionally, I felt like a weight lifted. Oh. And I think I'm hearing that from, mm -hmm. from people too. Even when they get like, oh, I'm on the list and I have a vaccine coming up next Thursday. Mm -hmm. There's already like a, oh, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I think, you know, that's part of it. So, mm -hmm. You know, the other statistic I heard today, too, that um, there are now more people that have had the vaccine than have had positive COVID tests, oh. which is wonderful. And also a study um, uh, by John Hopkins University, uh, they believe based on what we're seeing so far in tracking, that they, they will reach herd immunity worldwide by the end of April. <gasps> yeah. That's so awful. yeah, it's really huge. Yeah. So um, I think it's starting to roll and mm -hmm. get it any way you can. Absolutely. <laughs> um, what about paying for it? Oh, yes. So the, the government, um, no one should have to pay for the COVID vaccine. Uh, Medicare automatically pays. The provider giving it you, if you have insurance, may bill your insurance, but nobody's, if they can't pay, will be denied getting a vaccine. Right. So the, let the insurance people work it out, but you, mm -hmm. it's not a, a disclaimer right. that you can't get it right. if you don't have the money. So. And don't be afraid, uh, because when I signed up for mine at Waukesha Memorial, they wanted all my insurance information. Oh, okay. And I was like am I going to get charged? For <laughs> yeah. You know, and not that I cared. I would have paid for it no right. matter what. But, um, and then when my husband called to make his appointment, they didn't take any of that information. I mm. think it was just the screener, you know, Sure. but they never billed my insurance. Mm. But I think it, depending on where you get it, like if it's through a healthcare uh, group or organization like pro health or yeah. Aurora or whatever, mm -hmm. they're, they're putting you in their system right. if you're not already in the system. Mm -hmm. And your insurance information is part of that. Mm -hmm. um, but they never billed my insurance, and they never, I never got charged. I never saw anything. You know, there was no, I didn't have to turn in my, you know, show my insurance card, mm -hmm. anything like that. So mm -hmm. don't let that stop you if no, you're afraid right. about that. Um, most places, it, they don't even take that information. But. Well, and young people too, you know, maybe because they will be lower on the tier of right. receiving it, um, either under their parents' plan right. or they're working and have their own plan. But again, uh, if you don't have health insurance, which right. I think most people, we, but we're looking at access in the right. inner city in those right. areas that are really, um, that's, and this Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a big boon for them because they only have to receive one. Um, and, you know, they don't have access. They may yeah. not have a doctor. Yeah. And um, so this is going to be really helpful. And, you know, anytime you get a chance to talk it with somebody or has questions or now if you understand a little bit about the sa safety of it, that you would share it with somebody and not right. max, like you said, vaccine shame them. But you would just give them some facts about it and encourage leave them. their, yeah. encourage them. It's nothing to, you know, they, you know, this was not done. It was it was pushed through, but there's a lot of smart people out there, yeah. and they put the scientists to work. They got this done and through, and this, if it was not safe, it's got to go no. through, through, you know, they, it, it wouldn't be out there, and you would see all kinds of effects from it, and right. it's just not happening. Especially so. with the number of people that have been vaccinated right. now, right. and we're not really seeing any, anything right. significant. Um, what about, uh, one last question, I think. What mm. about the variant strains that we hear about that are coming oh, out of the UK yeah. and Good question. Brazil and Africa? Yep, those are the three areas. And I think just somewhere in Wisconsin, there was a fellow that had the UK strain and got hit COVID. Yeah. But um, he didn't really have any side effects from it. Okay. Um, it was, he tested positive and it was the strain. So again, this is something... They don't know much about that's when we I talked about the booster where we, we need to get mm -hmm. that but with the current those three areas Laura mentioned they um, this current vaccines will cover those strains mm -hmm. so you'll Good. be okay so yeah. you, you're covered with you this are covered no with those what? Yeah. that's what they're finding for now and they did then vaccinate this man that did have um, the UK strain 
and he, he's okay. Oh, good. But they, they said, yeah, it's going to be, it's like a flu, you know. <laughs> right. And, it, you, you know, it's adapting and mm-hmm. mutating just like mm-hmm. every year they adjust the flu vaccines yeah. based on what they're... The previous. Right, mm-hmm. and what they're seeing and tracking. Mm-hmm. And so it'll probably be like that. It's just that it's new, mm-hmm. hence novel coronavirus. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so we're learning as we go with this one. So. And it, with the SAR, you know, even this vaccine was information and stuff based on they kept from SARS mm. and the H1N1 and back in 1918 when they had that pandemic flu. Yeah. And isn't it ironic that now there's like almost no cases of the flu. Yeah. So it does tell you that washing your hands and we do know that respiratory droplets are the the way that this mm-hmm. is being transmitted. Mm-hmm. That's why we're masking. That's why we're not singing. That's why we're doing all of that. But washing your hands is, um, I don't, you know, we went with wiping everything down. I think that's kind of quelled a little bit because I don't think it doesn't seem to sit on hard surfaces too long. It's mostly the respiratory um, uh, factor. At least that's what they're coming up with. So, um, but again, it's like real time learning about this. And we may find some things out with, um, yeah, and even, young women pregnancies, Mm -hmm. um, a big factor, should I get it, should I not, and, um, you know, personal, you know, experience of knowing someone, um, a thousand percent you should, Yeah. Um, because if you get coronavirus um, and you're pregnant, um, the cases I've heard about, it's not, you're very ill, and the baby has to be isolated from you for three weeks. So you're not feeding that child, and they don't know long-term effects what that the child or the mother is going right. to get from that. So you have right. to weigh your options and talk to your doctor and mm. pray about it and right. make the decision. It's your decision, but get all, get all the information. But it sounds like it's, you know, yeah. you should get it. Awesome. Thank you, Marilyn. You're welcome. (laughs) Um, So Marilyn and I are always available if you want to talk more about this. I'm not an expert. Marilyn is a nurse. No, (laughs) I'm not an expert. Yeah. (laughs) uh, And on behalf of the task force, we want to thank you for your patience over this last year. We never imagined, I'm working on all the Lenten services, and it was mid-Lent last year that we shut down. And um, I'm looking back at that and thinking, I never would have imagined we'd be two Easter's not in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know uh, everybody's frustrated and anxious, and we'll talk in another talk about the emotional pandemic, <laughs> the mental health pandemic we're seeing around us, uh, around everywhere because of the isolation and the new way of having to do everything and everything being on screens and the loneliness and the separation. The task force is very much mindful of that, too. And so we just want you to know that we meet, we meet monthly, more often if need to be, and um, uh, we're very serious about moving forward with getting back to church as soon as we can safely. And so we appreciate your patience. We really, really, really want to be back together, and we really want to do it the right way and um, do our part as part of the community to help... Um, create a safe community for everybody. So thanks for your patience with all of that. And um, we'll keep you posted. Well done. We're going to sing it out. Oh, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a little, a little ditty. Yo, okay, here we go. Don't worry be about, about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. <laughs> we love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>